timing the crankshaft to the cam gear. This is the timing marks that you want to get correct before you bolt it together. But once you have these two marks in alignment, they will not change. And as you can see right there on the crankshaft, the, 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 white, the white tooth is the one that is marked. That is the timing mark on the crankshaft. Okay, if you come on around, go all the way around, all the way around, all the way around. You see those two marks that came into sight? that's on the cam gear okay these this mark here and those two marks has to be in alignment so with the bearing caps off the crankshaft is free to move so all you do is pick up the crankshaft and turn it and turn it until now, now, if you can see, when that comes on around, that would be one tooth off. It would be half on that side. So you pick it up one more time and put it that way. When that comes on around, those three teeth meshes in perfect alignment. Okay, if you go all the way around, if you turn that, that crankshaft all the way around, it will come back into alignment. It is two to one. The that's where you get your four cycle ignition. It would always come back to number one. You cannot. That's that's what the reason I say you cannot get this wrong. Those two mark those two 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 teeth are marked, and this tooth are marked. And with the, uh, the the white highlight there, they're easy to see on this side. Now, if you turn it all the way around and look into the crankcase on this side, the teeth on that side will be marked, and this one won't. Also simple. Uh, set this timing right here, and then you, you will have a very happy engine. While, while, while we're over here, I'll show you something. This crankshaft will move in and out, uh, some of them about a quarter of an inch. And if you look right down in yonder, when you slide the crankshaft that way, the uh, misalignment of those two gears are to that side over yonder uh, about almost an eighth of an inch. So if you pull it back this way and come around, they are misaligned about a sixteenth of an inch. The best rule of thumb that I have found is once I get all of this, the shims and, and get everything bolted together, you can still slide this back and forth. After you get the, the piston and all in there, that will still move back and forth. When you put your flywheels on there is the time to center this up. You would you would push it as far as it would go that way. And uh, even if you want to make a mark here. And then pull it back this way and make a mark on the outside of the crankshaft here and then just slide it back half that distance and that would be where you would lock your flywheels in and that will center up your uh, gear on the two gears plus it will put your uh, rod in the center of the engine now let's get on with the show uh, time to shim up this crankshaft now now we're going to put some grease in there first. And I was questioned about what kind of grease do I use in there. And I'm kind of biased to that uh, Lucas. And one year I spent about six months studying about grease. 
So, uh, and when it was all said and done, uh, Lucas was the was my grease of choice. Uh, I don't own no stock in the company or nothing. It just uh, seemed like it works good for me. It's a good solid body grease, Lucas. Uh, I think it will serve you well. I do use the green. I don't much care for that red stuff. On this side of the engine, it's quite easy to see when those three teeth uh, lines up. It's quite easy to verify it right there. And also, yeah, you can see it on the other side over there. Now I can't get a camera. I can't get a camera picture up in Yanner, but you can look through this right here, and it's you can ready readily visible. Uh, right up on this side right here too. So you can verify it. Now that we have uh, verified that the timing in the crankcase is correct, we can uh, assemble the, uh, the, cr the shims and the bearing caps. The, and kind of to save time there, I did kind of pre-assemble. And the other day we was talking about the length of these shims right here. And if you can see these shims right here, they come all the way out to the end of the bearing. And the shorter ones uh, only comes out to the edge of that right, like, uh, right there. I uh, don't know why, probably year model or something. The the thick one goes on the bottom, and if you if you remember, we did talk about the inside angle of that was cut off. I do have some some of the some of the bottom ones that has that cut off. But there is actually no reason to ever remove that thick shim. You only would remove a thin one. And and, and I did find two thin ones and a thick one on the little ones in, in order so that I would have a thin one to remove because most likely this will wear in. But even at that, you could take a 10,000 out and put a 5,000 back in if need be. The uh, And like I say, the grease, grease that I use is Lucas the green a good amount of Lucas grease and and I probably will turn it a few turns so that it will get completely coated don't let an engine starve for grease never let that be the the problem always always have an excess of grease a copious amounts of grease bordered on way too much grease oh uh, yeah and I will get up inside the housing yonder I uh, let's just do it now <laughs> 